Remember that Family Guy episode where Peter is the news anchor and he has the It Grinds My Gears segment? You know what really grinds my gears? Well, today we're gonna do something similar about Lightroom because Lightroom, we love it, we hate it, it drives us insane, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of complaints for it. There's, there's a lot, especially like when it slows down and you're wondering what is going on? Why are you going so slow? Well, there's a reason. Um, and it drives us crazy. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to go over those complaints, the biggest ones, the ones that we hate and why we stare at our computer longing for the day for Lightroom to be better. My name is Will, welcome back to the channel where I go over photography things, from editing to photographs to flashes to all the things that are related to photography. I hope you are subscribed to the channel and have that bell clicked. If you don't, go ahead and do that now. The first thing about Lightroom that drives everyone absolutely mad, can you guess what it is? Well, there's actually two things, so there's two right answers to this. The first one is the subscription model, paying so much for the subscription, but you know what? We live in a world where subscriptions are what were we the world we live in. So you just get the subscription that fits you. Now, in case you didn't know, Adobe actually has a plan where you can just get Photoshop and both Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic, because there's two different versions. Also, another thing that drives people insane. Anyways, re regardless, uh, that is cheaper than the whole Adobe suite. So that is not relevant to this video. Just you know, because it's an annoying thing. But the second and probably the more important one is it's so slow. Oh my God, it's just so slow. And maybe it's primarily user error on my part because my computer, I'm using a 2019 MacBook Pro. I mean, that's like six years old. So it could just be that, but I feel like other people have slow times as well. Now there are a few ways to fix this. So here's the first one. Here we are in Lightroom, here's our photo. And if you notice right here, we're working on the original photo. You can create smart previews to edit the photo. Now this is not using the original RAW because the RAW is tied to the hard drive or wherever you have it stored. So let me simplify this. Let's say your RAWs are on your external hard drive. You edit on that external hard drive, but you wanna travel and not take that with you. How do you do this? So here's our photo. We're just gonna do this on one photo, but if you wanted to do it on all, you would just select all the photos. Come up here to where it says original photo. You're gonna click that button and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna build a smart preview for this photo? You say build smart preview. Boom, it builds a smart preview. Now, if you look at here, it says original plus smart preview. Now, if I eject this hard drive, right, where this file is, you'll now notice that it just says smart preview. Here's the cool thing. If I click on the other photos, it says this file could not be found because it is only the original. It's connected to the raw. Go back to this one here. We have a smart preview. The hard drive is not connected. We can edit. Even better, we can export. So right click on this, go to export, export, blah, 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 blah. It'll give you a prompt saying that some of them, if they're not all smart previews are built, that's fine. Press yes. Then select where it is, press export, and boom, it exports it right there. There you have it, there is the exported photo. So you can do all of this with smart previews and it just makes it faster. The other way is to optimize your catalogs. Now, if you don't know how to do that, I have a whole video right here, here, I'm not sure where it's gonna pop up, one of these corners, go check it out. Number two, and before we get into that, I gotta reconnect my external hard drive really fast, make sure I'm unplugging the right one. Have you ever gone into Lightroom, into your library, and seen this little exclamation point on your photos? This is when Lightroom cannot find your photos. They are, you have moved them, you've transferred their location, and Lightroom doesn't know where you put it. There is a way to find this. You simply click this, you can then go locate it, and blah, 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 blah. You can do all of that. But, there is an easier way to do this. Let's go ahead and move this back into the folder, right? Good, now the explanation is gone. How do you do this? Well, you can actually move and adjust things in Lightroom so they stay connected. For example, if I wanted to move this, fo this photo here, this raw file, I can simply click it and drag it into whatever folder that I want. By doing this, this allows Lightroom, let me cancel that, this allows Lightroom to move it and still know where it is. 
Now you can also rename too. Let's say I wanted to rename this folder. I can right click on it. I can rename and I can do, let's just put test. So then when I go back to the folder, you'll notice that now it says test. You can do a lot of things like that in Lightroom to maintain the organization and maintain connectivity so you don't lose anything and then have to reconnect it. And the next one is that, well, this is a two-parter. Lightroom, there's two of them. There's Lightroom Classic and there's Lightroom CC. Lightroom CC is the cloud-based version Lightroom. It looks like this. Lightroom Classic is the desktop version. It looks like this. I have a video on these explanations right here. Go check that out. But the second part is that Lightroom is too complex, that there's too many sliders, that there's too many edit, there's just too many in and outs and things that just don't make sense. But here's the thing, once you spend a little time in it, you'll get it. And then once you practice editing, you'll get it more. And if you really wanna master Lightroom, guess what? I have a Lightroom master editing course, which is freaking awesome. It covers everything that you need to know about editing in Lightroom. So I'll link it in the description for you to go check out. It gives you a ton more information on what the course covers. Again, everything, including a bunch of bonuses, extras and whatnots, but you'll love it. The next thing is the catalog system doesn't make any sense. Why would I use it? Why do I need it? What do I do with it? But here's the thing, the cataloging system is actually relatively genius and pretty simple once you understand the basis of it. Think of the catalog as your cookbook. You have your raw ingredients, your raw photo. The cookbook holds your recipes, your instructions, your this, that, and the other thing. So when you take your cookbook and you apply it to your raw, you take your edits and you apply it to your raw photo, you get those edits. The catalog saves all of that data in one place. That is essentially all it is. Now you can create new catalogs for every shoot. You can have one master catalog for everything. You can optimize your catalog. There's a lot more to it. And if you wanna see all that, check out this video right here. Again, not sure which side, but catalogs are pretty ingenious. Once you understand them, you just apply how you like to do it and then move on from it. You don't need to think about it anymore. The next one is a personal grievance. And that is that the AI, even though it's really good, sucks when it comes to group photos. And here's what I mean. Here's an amazing wedding party photo that I took. If I go into the masks, create mask and select subject, watch. Look at this, okay. This annoys me. Look at all of this between the gaps. It's selected. Now I understand AI is as good as it's gonna be and it's gonna continue to get better, but it drives me freaking crazy sometimes. Look, I mean, you can see between every single person, is highlighted. Now, if we look in, if we zoom in, it missed the top of his head. And sometimes it just misses the people's head altogether. When there's multiple people, sometimes it misses several heads of people's and it drives me absolutely insane. Now, the way I fix that is I just simply add a brush and I paint each one individually and I subtract the mask and it's just a pain in the butt. But please Lightroom, fix that because that drives me insane. The next real complaint, and I even get this on my own videos when people are commenting on them, is that Lightroom is not like Photoshop. And you know what? You're damn right it's not because it's Lightroom. Lightroom, Photoshop, two completely different programs. They're designed to be compatible with each other. If Lightroom was Photoshop, we wouldn't need Lightroom or Photoshop because we, we don't need two programs. So. Lightroom is designed to be a basic editor. Layers, things like that. Yes, we're getting a little something, something here and there, but it's not Photoshop. Lightroom is extremely good, and a lot of times you can do the majority of your edits in, in this program. But if you need to do more complex layering and compos composites and stuff like that, go to Photoshop. But don't compare Lightroom to Photoshop because they're completely separate programs that can be used for completely separate things. Yes, they're compatible, especially with Camera Raw in Photoshop, which is basically Lightroom, but they're two separate programs, so use them as they should be. But those are the biggest complaints about Lightroom. It's not a perfect program. Honestly, I don't think there is a perfect program out there, but once you figure out the workarounds, once you figure out how to use it and how to work with these different things, it becomes an incredible tool to edit your photos and bring to life what you have imagined. So make sure to go check out my Lightroom Master of Editing course. I'd love to hear what your biggest complaint is, so comment that below. Hit the like button, subscribe if you didn't in the beginning of this video, and here is a couple of more videos that you might enjoy. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.